Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I am going to be doing my October favourites and also just update you on what's going on in my life. So obviously every month I do a favourites video, whether it be like a haul or what's, what I'm liking. Today I was getting ready to film it and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to like go too into the product stuff. I just want to have a chat, like chat about what's going on, chat about like how I'm feeling, chat about life, but also throw in some bits too. Why not? October! Hey, October's been and it's passed and it was a pretty good month. The end of October sucked a bit, but that's just all me being... Ugh. October made me realise that I love autumn. Um, something about this year, I mean, I always get different emotions and feelings and kind of nostalgic nostalgic kind of feelings when the seasons come around. I don't know what it is, but it's like a feeling, like a, a season has a feeling towards it. Um, and each, each season's feeling is different. This year, autumn's was different in the sense that I felt more excited. Um, I was excited because I was planning a Halloween party, but also I kind of got into the vibe of planning Christmas a little bit more earlier too, like figuring out what I was gonna do. We booked a meal and I just felt super festive. You know, I was really happy that I could start wearing my big jumpers. I love wearing my oversized coats. Um, I, was, I got like, like excited because pumpkin spice lattes come back and I remember the first sip of my pumpkin spice latte, I was like, oh my God, this is the epitome of autumn. This taste is just like, brings back the feelings of the season. I was almost like, I'm, I'm not even joking, I feel like autumn is kicking summer's ass because summer is my favourite season. I just love the long nights, I love the warmth, I love beach shit and stuff. I got like friends that are like, yeah, I love autumn and winter, they're my favourite seasons. And I was always like, why? I couldn't get my head around it, but now I know. Now I know. It also meant that we could light the fire. That was good. The first bit of October though, I went to Liverpool where I went and shot a lookbook with Yeti. That was super, super fun. If you haven't seen it already, then it is here. I will put the link somewhere. And for me, it was, it was exciting because Yeti were like creating this video with me. They'd come up with the concept and we'd plan the video together. Like, because it was different to how I normally roll and do things, I couldn't help but feel a little bit nervous because I had, there's a razor here by the way, so I'm warming my hands. I did some acting in it, which I felt like I did a rubbish job of. I felt really self-conscious. Um, I know I was playing myself, but that was weird. Like, I think that was hard playing yourself because you're reading a script. So you have to be yourself, but you're reading a script. You know what I mean? It was just weird. So a lot of it I did improv in the end. I just had to ask what the point of what I was saying was. And the boys were really nice and like encouraging and saying how like I was doing a good job, etc. And they did an amazing job filming it and just making it. And I was really, really chuffed when I saw the outcome. But that was a really fun couple of days. I ended up staying with one of my friends from like days past. So my friend Becky that I grew up with up in Yorkshire. I stayed with her um, in her ha in her new house that she bought. So before my wedding, I hadn't seen Becky in about eight years because I visited her when I was 18 and then hadn't really spoke or like seen each, we hadn't seen each other and like, like occasionally spoke. But we were like, we were growing up. We had like our own lives going on. Um, and then when it was just before my wedding, I went up, I went up to Liverpool for a meeting and I just chanced it and asked if she wanted to meet up and we hung out and it was just like no time had passed at all. So that got me thinking and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna invite her on my hen do. And I did and I'm so glad I did. And I invited her and her boyfriend Luke to my wedding and it was amazing. So, you know, we speak regularly now. Anyway, I went and stayed with her because she lives in Liverpool on this Yeti shoot. And I felt really, really great. It was an odd feeling, but I don't know what it was, but I felt oddly myself in a different way, like I felt a little bit free. And I think it's because, and I, it is because, when I was growing up with Becky, um, there was no such thing as social media. We didn't really have any, like we had phones, but they were shit phones. And so when I, so I don't know what it is, but when I was around her, I just felt like being a kid again. I felt, I just felt normal. And I suppose it's because she, I, I haven't like been around her as I was, I don't know, becoming this online personality. And I felt a just a little bit more normal, like a little bit more, 
I, don't, I can't even explain it. Basically, the fact that I wasn't an online person when I was growing up with her, um, and I, we didn't have the, uh, the need to go on our phones and stuff. I just felt like a little ounce of me that I was again. I hope that makes sense, but it was a really nice feeling. It was a really nice, refreshing feeling that I haven't felt in a while. So that was really good. And I hung out with her and her friend Ginny, and it was super good. And then the day after, what oh, the f doorbell? Doorbell. Oh, there's always carnage when the doorbell goes. And the day after that, um, I then drove the hour, an hour to Manchester and hang out with Megan, Megan Ellaby. If you don't know her already, you damn well should, because she's awesome. Um, and it was just really nice to hang out with someone who I feel like, uh, who inspires me, who um, whose style is great and is very similar. Um, and she's just really cool and down to earth and normal and awesome. And she's got, she's got like the coolest life. Like she's just so cool. So I got on really well with her and we filmed a video together, which um, was, well, I did our style confessions and she did a ASOS outfit challenge. Then what else happened? Oh, after that, I got my hair taken out. So I had my extensions in and uh, they were growing out, they were falling out and they were like, there wasn't many left in the hair. So they looked shit. They looked like, oh my God. I didn't really look after them that well this time round because this was the set I got for my wedding. And then I went on my honeymoon and then, um, you know, like being in the sea, in swimming pools, water parks, you name it. I didn't really like, you know, look after them properly. But. So I was relieved to get them taken out. And I think I will, get them be put back in at some point but i'm just spending time rocking the bob like i'm having fun with having a bob the plan is is to get the color back to how i want it before i get my extensions again now all of this down to about there is unbleached hair so my hair used to look like this and as you can see that it was very light at the bottom and then there was a dark root color. Now, every time I got my roots done after that, we would just put purple dye on the root. We wouldn't bleach it. And so eventually, the curler would get dragged down and down and down and down, because um, we didn't want to put bleach on the hair. And so all my hair was pretty dark. And my hair was pretty dark also to help with the extension so it'll all blend together. But I want my hair to be like it was in that picture, where it was light and then a dark root. So I can have like pastel, like, purple extensions and then a deep root so like it, it's like a purple balayage basically is the end goal but obviously to protect the integrity of the hair it the lightening process needs to be done slowly so i went for a balayage one week and it came it was quite copper when it came out so lightened it a bit more and then we used a different toner and it came out like this, this is what it came out like. So it is still purple, but I'm gonna go and get a full head of foil soon just to start lightening the hair up so it can be back to being kind of pastel. So I'm impatient though, and even though I don't mind my hair, I just want it to be how I want it now. Um, and I need to remember my own kind of like lessons I tell people is you've got to be patient with hair because, but oh, I don't know, I don't know. I have now I am now on the last Harry Potter book on Audible which makes me super happy because I am going to meet my goal of being done by Christmas so I can have my movie marathon I had my super amazing Halloween party I spent like weeks prepping that I was getting the decorations sorted the food sorted I just put a lot of effort into it I think partly the reason why I was like getting on the organization train for Christmas and Halloween is that like post wedding blues need for something to do. Like I had so much joy arranging my wedding and that was like my distraction. And so I always feel like I need something now to do or to plan and my friends have picked up on it now. So, but they, 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 they don't say it's a problem. They think it's quite funny really. They want me now to arrange a, a bloody New Year's Eve party. But that was really good. The vlog, for the vlog for that one is like my favorite vlog because I'm not even joking. When the next day when we're clearing up, I found my camera and it was somewhere random and I took the SD card out and I plugged it in the computer and I'd completely forgotten 
that we'd left it rolling and filmed the party. Like, what happened was, is we were partying in the house, and then a few people were like, let's go to the waterfront, which is like a local nightclub, where the only nightclub I go to, because it's like the rock alternative one. Ugh, I hate saying that, but it is. It is a, a riot crack on Halloween, but also it has a massive queue. And I thought, look, I've got loads of pizza here, loads of cake, I've still got tons of booze and punch left. Why would I pay for a taxi into town, to wait potentially for ages, to maybe not even get in, to pay like, I don't know if it was like 10 quid on the door, I don't know, but I was like, I'm staying put. If anyone else wants to leave, they can go, but I'm, I'm gonna stay here and finish the party in here. And luckily, quite a few friends were like, yeah, let's just stay here. So because I didn't wanna like, you know, annoy my neighbors, we went to the end of my garden, which is where my office is, and because it's like an office slash studio, it's really big and spacious, so we turned it into our own nightclub. I left the camera rolling on the side when we were in there dancing, and it was just so funny to watch back everything. Yeah, that was pretty good. So watch that if you can. Hang on. I'm rest of tea. Yeah, that was like the end of the month, I suppose. Yeah, it was the 31st. I suppose the end of the month slash beginning of November, like last week, was really, really... I just had a bad head week. I'm just gonna call it a head week. You could say it was a bad mental health week or whatever, because I just felt miserable last week. It was just, you know, it started where I was... got, I was awake at like five o'clock and I was gonna, you know, gonna go up and go to boot camp, but I just couldn't get out of bed. I just felt really unmotivated. I was like, I should go. I know I should go, but I didn't wanna go. I didn't wanna go and I felt like a bad friend because Danny goes there. And I was just feeling doubtful about everything, like about my relationship, about my, like work life, about me, like my, my body, my image, my fashion, my hair, like everything was just making me feel like shit. I don't know, I think I can sit here and be like, oh, this is what you need to do to motivate yourself and make yourself feel better. But I think honestly, sometimes it just happens where you just have like a bad week or a bad day and, and uh, you need to think it over and sort of give your time, give yourself the time to, feel like that, even though you don't want to, but I think it's really, I don't know, sometimes I think it's important to doubt certain aspects of your life because you need to change it. So for example, I've been really feeling really shitty about my, my weight, I've, I'm like the heaviest I've ever been because last month, October, I fucking ate everything. Crunchies became my new thing and I was eating crunchies all the time. Um, I had all them cakes and stuff at my party, I drank so much booze. Um, my eating was really, really off and even though I was going to boot camp, like no way did that make up for the fact that I was eating shit all month and so I feel at the minute really just not nice I feel really unhealthy like when I'm jogging I can I notice all the wobbly bits and like I know for some people that doesn't matter but like I personally just don't like it because I just don't feel healthy and myself and you know good so that was one thing I was just like oh god I've really let myself go but the thing is, is when you feel sad about that you just all, all I want to do is eat more chocolate to comfort myself so you know, I gotta stop all that, stop it. No, you can do it, you can just have a, be good girl, be good. I was feeling uh, negative about me and Matthew. I kept starting arguments. I was getting angry at him for like nothing. I mean, granted, he did piss me off at my Halloween party, but, and I, and I sort of dragged that out for a few days. And you know, we had like rows and pfft, I don't know, I was just being an idiot. I think we both needed a good talking to, but I was, feeling really like oh my god this is the end of my marriage this is what have I done I've married the wrong person blah 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 you know it was like that dramatic and then um and then I was just feeling shitty about YouTube and work and like I didn't upload much last week at all because I just didn't have I just didn't want to uh, I uploaded on my vlogging channel because that's easy but like main channel stuff I find more harder to feel more like you know, I've got, got to have a purpose. I just felt like, I just had a feeling last week, which I'm over now, I've just sort of sort, talked myself out of it. I had a feeling last week that I am not accomplishing anything at the moment. My views and my subscribers have like stayed the same, you know, they're about the same as they've always been. There's no like 
you know, there's no like, whoa, massive growth. It's not like, fuck, she's gained like 20,000 subscribers overnight and you know, my views aren't like skyrocketing. They just stayed the same. So I was like, uh, okay. And maybe I just got a bit of the green eyed monster, really. Cause I've been seeing other people and the successes like, oh, I'm bringing out a book or I'm gonna be doing this tour or I'm gonna be bringing out some this or I'm gonna be doing that or I'm now the face of this. I'm now doing that, I'm going here. And there's me like thinking, you are nothing. Like, I just felt like I'm not achieving anything. I'm not moving forward with my life. And I felt like, oh God, no. And it just mounted up on me. I was like, who am I? What am I doing? What is my purpose? Why am I even YouTubing? Do people even find me interesting? You know, I thought things like, you know, uh, I love doing makeup videos, love doing beauty videos, but I'm not like super amazing, incredibly good at it. And I, I was thinking like the, this day and age, if you wanna be a beauty YouTuber or a makeup YouTuber, you need to be like pro at it for people to care and take you seriously. Um, I was like, I hate my clothes at the moment, so I'm not even, I can't even be a fashion YouTuber because I'm not feeling my style at the moment or I'm confused, what's going on? Like. I basically had the biggest head fuck of a week last week. I woke up the beginning of this week and I thought to myself, right, you're going to you're going to stop being lazy and putting things off because you're you don't want to do it or you can move it to another day. You're gonna get up. You're gonna go to boot camp every morning. You're then gonna take the dogs for a walk every morning. You're gonna get shit done in the day rather than like putting it off and just be like, just do it. Just have, just just be your own boss and propel yourself forward. Cause I just told myself, there's no point feeling sorry for yourself when I have the power to make change. And if I'm just gonna sit about sulking about life and how unfair it is, um, nothing's gonna change. So, you know, I'm gonna carry on what I'm doing. And also with the whole thing with like moving forward or becoming successful or, you know, all that jazz. You know what, I, I've talked told myself, it's okay if you're not moving forward or making progression right now. You know, you're just, just cool, blobbing along, doing your thing. Everyone has their time to shine and everyone might change, like everyone does something with their life at some point, you know? It doesn't have to, it might not be now, I might be doing this for like five more years, who knows? But I know people that have like drastic career changes or um, just decide they don't like their life and pack up and leave, you know? I can, I've got all my life to, to decide who I want to be. There was a girl at a party I went to on Saturday and she was, she said she'd been a science technician for years and years and years and she decided to pack it in and wanted to be a personal trainer. You know, that stuff like that just makes you think, yeah, yeah, cool. Anyway, I've been blabbing for ages. I'm just going to show you some of the little things that have made me happy this month in the form of stuff. So uh, first thing I want to show you is the lip colour I'm wearing, which is um, Lovecraft. It's from Kat Von D and I, I can't remember if it came with the little package they sent me with some of their new colours, but they have a bunch of new colours. They have a bunch of new colours and um, this one, I don't even think it's new, but, it, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been wearing this one a lot and I really like it. It's a really nice nude, but it's more on the pinker side of life. I do like my nudes, but I don't like them if they're a little bit too brown. Depends what I'm wearing. If I'm wearing like earthy tones, then that's cool. The other thing from Kat Von D that is a favorite of mine, is it a favorite? It's new, it's intriguing, is the Saint and Sinner palette, which I've been lusting over for ages and they kindly sent it to me. And it looks like this. I think it looks like a big, amazing, ornate door to like a cathedral. Um, and it's a Saint and Sinner on it. And you open it up and it is incredible. Um, the colors are really super nice. I must admit, when I first got it, I was really, really excited about it. Um, but then when I started using it, I was like a bit scared and confused. I don't know what to do. So it does have like a nice amount of, this is my problem, it does have a nice amount of matte tones, but I like my matte to be my base color. And I thought like some of these were just a bit like that and that, like a little bit too dark or vibrant for a base color. So I would have probably used like Amen or Baptism as my base colors. Um, I use Master as well and that kind of scared me a bit, but I kind of got used to using it a little bit more and um, I do really, really like it. I'm use I've used it today. Today I used a variation of Rosary, Sacred Heart and Baptism. So I used those two and this colour here. But I've made some really nice orange, orangey, like bright yellowy looks. I'm yet to experiment with like the purples and the blues, but I've definitely gone for like pinks and oranges. So we'll see how we get on with this, but I think it definitely is 
a very awesome palette which I recommend like for me I just need a little bit more practice with it and like use it a bit more but I do really like it and I am so grateful that they sent it so Mwah. another favorite of mine oh yeah this bag so um this bag is from Matt and Nat and I already have two bags from Matt and Nat I have a black rucksack and I have a <laughs> it's actually a nappy bag but I didn't think it was a nappy bag I just thought it was like a really practical handbag with loads of pockets and stuff the fact that it has a changing mat though which I thought was a laptop sleeve don't ask <laughs> is actually a nappy bag but I use it for my work bag if I'm going like away and I need someone to put my laptop and stuff but anyway uh, I got this bag from them and it's it's really cool. It's kind of like a satchel. It's got this one strap with rose gold buckles and stuff and uh, it looks like this and it opens up ooh, opens up to two compartments like this. So it's got one there and it's got one there and inside they have like pockets and zips and stuff and then it has a little mouth on the back there. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. That's where I put my car parking ticket in that bit. But I have used this so much. I am very safe when it comes to bags, as you might know. Um, I always stick with like a black or, or whatever, apart from my Gucci bag, which is purple. I'm just very safe with my bags. And I thought, you know what? No, you're not gonna be safe anymore. So I got this and it goes really nicely with my pink kind of teddy bear coat, which is from Topshop. Even though it's like pink on pink, I don't care. I really like the combination and I just think it's really cute. You know what I really love about it? The actual reason why I love it is, uh, I didn't think that would make me sad saying this, but it just did, a little tinge of sadness. Um, it looks like a handbag my nanny would have had, my grandma. Um, it's the, the exact right colour something she'd wear. It just looks like a nanny Maureen bag. Um, yeah. The next thing, which I discovered, thanks to my stepmom telling me about them, Sainsbury's. This is like the random thing. I brought up this up from my fridge. <laughs> Squaffles. These are lovely. So they're cut into these little round waffle shapes. And they make, yeah, they make a good healthier alternative for like chips or for potatoes or whatever. You just drizzle a little bit of oil or a little bit of cooking spray on them. And I like season the hell out of them. I put oregano, garlic salt, Nando's salt stuff on, maybe some paprika, maybe even some curry powder. And, and you cook them for 20 minutes, roast them for 20 minutes. They're so good. One thing I love about Sainsbury's is they do have a really good prepared vegetable section. They do good spaghetti made out of courgette. They do lasagna sheets. Like it's really good for making like a healthy lasagna. Another favorite of mine is this jumper. So like, this is like my favorite piece of clothing for the month, apart from my big pink coat, but that's, that, that's awesome. Um, but this jumper is this zebra print jumper that I got from Topshop. I just bought it randomly. It's got this lovely fringed bit here and it's kind of cropped. But this has been my go-to jumper to wear when I've been feeling chilly in the house because obviously it's getting colder. Um, and it's just really nice and snuggly and just lovely. And I love it because I feel very, very me in it. I've also really enjoyed wearing these. I've worn the shit out of these shoes this month. Um, these are my Topshop studded boots. They do them in black as well, but these have been like my go-to boots. And actually, I'm gonna show you another pair of shoes because they're sat right in front of me. Office had a 20% off sale, so I bought some leather high top Converse. Um, I didn't have any white high tops. Actually, I don't have any, I don't think I have any high top Converse anymore. <laughs> my favorite, like if I can have them in leather, I will have my Converse in leather. Um, just cause it's better for this time of year. Um, and I've worn these, when I'm wearing them, I've been wearing these. I just don't know, I get this really weird nostalgic feeling when I look at the Converse logo. And when it's like in bed, like when it's stuck on with leather like that, it makes me feel, feel it even more. I don't know if there was a movie that I used to watch when I was a kid where I used to wear them. I don't know if it was like Dennis the Menace, but the, the live version, I can't remember. But I, I get this weird like child, childy feeling when I look at it. Hmm. Oh, and the last thing I want to show you, which I've actually had for ages, and I might have already like featured it in a previous favourites, but I've actually used it all nearly. It is the uh, Eclectic by Tom Dixon London candle. As you can see, we have used it all month. It comes with this little like marble topper on it. I'm not gonna lie, these are well expensive, and I got because I got it in a, I got it in a press. I got in a press package from Wella when they brought out some new shampoo, which had like rose gold on it. And they put this in it, which was really cool. And thank you. And I saw it in a shop though, like John Lewis. And these are, these are like 50 pounds, but oh my God, it is a very good candle. It's something that you would probably put on your Christmas, like wish list. It smells like London but like old London, but not like scurvy London or like the plague London, like bricks and 
bricks and fire and uh, just I'd really like it. It's almost quite smoky, I'd say. We lit it because it's perfect for like autumn and this kind of time of year where it's bonfires and fireplaces and smoke and warmth and cuddling up and that kind of thing. Oh, there's one last thing. Oh yeah, the last thing that I got that I've been loving and using every day are my in-ear headphones. These are my JBL headphones. Um, I'll put a link to which ones they are in the description. They are just these little in-ears and they have like a curly bit which curls into your ear. Wow. Um, they they feel a little bit weird to begin with when you put them in. But when you get used to like the shape and you kind of position them properly, they're like amazing. What I like about them, which is, is they keep the sound in. Like they're good at blocking out sound, but they're also good at keeping it in. So you know when you're sitting on a train or something, you don't have to worry about being that person. I like the colour because it matches my flip, which is here. Ooh, matchy. But yeah, that is the stuff that I've liked and that has been my story of the month. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you. If you like this kind of format of video, just say. If you don't, then also say, I suppose. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'll speak to you soon and uh, farewell, goodbye.